The last 40 years of mainstream music has been pretty interesting to say the least. We've seen a shift from live recordings to drum machines and samplers replacing traditional bands, and in turn, birthing genres like hip hop and R&B. But for I, how is this important towards achieving a modern R&B vocal effect? I just wanted it to tour a while. We'll get to that part soon enough. It's important to gain an understanding of the past to better perceive both present and future. So we'll take it back to the 80s. Since so much music came out during this time, we'll focus on just one tape, a textbook example which I believe influenced future music to come. This album would be Michael Jackson's Thriller. When we actually dig into the production and rollout of this album, we see the pinnacle of studio recording and marketing. World-class engineers, endless budgets, A-grade musicians, classic audio gear, amazing branding and a willingness to experiment with whatever came to mind. Mix all this genius together and you get an album which laid the foundation down for generations of musicians to come. Not just from a musical standpoint, but also from a business perspective. To date, Thriller has been one of the highest selling albums of all time. But what really sets this album apart is how it got to that point. If we look back to the story-driven Thriller music video, the success we saw the video create for companies like MTV and the heavy use of singles to push album sales, we can clearly see where the modern day artist formula came from. Fast forward to the 90s, the early 2000s and now the 2010s, we see the same strategy still being used. Artists like Usher, The Weeknd, Chris Brown, Beyonce and many more have all created multi-million dollar empires off of this method of working. Now, back to the modern R&B sound itself, because this is what has always interested me. I've always felt the sound has been quite, eh, flexible. Nice. We've seen hip hop generally lean towards a certain sound every season. For example, the never ending Atlanta trap wave or the heavy New York sound from the early 2000s. We see R&B influenced music take a different approach. Since R&B puts a focus on emotion, musicality and tone, we tend to find a whole range of different sounds within the genre. From sad piano ballads with Usher crying in the rain, more upbeat party anthems with funk or even EDM inspired melodies. It seems this genre is inspired by everything. And that's where things start to get weird. When does it stop being R&B and enter the pop and hip hop territory? And what even is contemporary or urban? Looking at Wikipedia, we see contemporary R&B described as a distinctive record production style, machine backed rhythms, pitched corrected vocals and a smooth, lush style of vocal arrangement. Electronic influences are becoming an increasing trend and the use of hip hop or dance inspired beats are typical, although the roughness and grit inherent in hip hop may be reduced and smoothed out. But isn't that what most modern music made on a computer is? Eh, anyway. To wrap this up though, it's safe to say R&B could consist of sample and synth based beats with lyrics about emotions. How deep you're willing to go depends on each artist. The track I chose to cover today is Go Crazy by Chris Brown and Young Thug, as I feel it fits our current time. Trap drums, keyboard melodies remnant of the 2000s and upfront vocals you can achieve at home. I'll do a part 2 covering the background vocals as I ran out of time during this part, I generally keep the tutorial segment to 20 minutes, but yeah definitely check the links in the description for my vocal recording course, vocal mixing course as well as vocal enhancer, as well as the FLP for this project file, let's get it. Alright man, it is time to get straight into it, so as you can see right now we have the Chris Brown Young Thug Go Crazy track, we got our vocals right here, we'll take a listen to it and then we'll break it down, let's get it. Alright, there you go. So pretty cool, right? We got the vocal sound pretty much identical. And yeah, we have lots to break down, man. So just want to make sure my mic is recording. Alright, so as you can see, vocal sound pretty much identical, really nice, um, but yeah man, you can obviously adapt this to your own style, as you can see, I definitely used my own style of vocals to really blend in with the track, so yeah man, let's firstly take a look at the layout as well as the layout of the template, so you can get an idea of what's going on. Our top layer we'll have is the main vocal, as you know, you obviously need a main vocal with any of your music, so there you go, we've got a main vocal. Second to that, we have a vocal double, which is a direct double of the main vocal, where you can pretty much input your vocals on different sections and then 
you know, leave your vocals out on certain other parts to give it kind of this uh, in and out vibe. After that, man, just to really complement and fill out the spaces like how Chris Brown would do. Chris Brown is obviously one of the kings of it. T-Pain probably is the top tier goat of uh, doing this vocal double style. But yeah, you can see I kind of had a, his sound influenced on this. But as you can see right there, doubles left and right. And then we've got some other things which we'll talk about just now. But yeah, that's pretty much the meat and potatoes of the track. We also have from my Hyperdrive sound pack. So definitely check out that on my web store. If you want cool reverse reverb sounds and that kind of thing, you can get that there. We've also got a stutter, uh, you know, just kind of pops in within the track right there. And that's pretty much what we have going on there, man. So yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so now we can take a look at the mixer section. And as you can see, we've got a pretty standard Fry's template. For those who are unaware of my template, if you do copy anything from the web store, you do now get an updated video with which pretty much breaks down everything to do with my template style. But just to kind of run you through it, uh, we add our microphone here. You obviously always want to have a mic input channel so you can actually listen to the various vocal chains. This is the best way to do that. And you would be able to navigate to all the different uh, kind of light blue channels or green channels. Uh, and you would be able to then, you know, record in the various different vocal chains. So control, left click will allow you to do that. So pretty cool. It allows you to listen to this channel, the double channel, and then the backings left and right, just like what we see in the uh, playlist area. So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, we'll start off with the main vocal. So what I'll do right now is I will actually um, play the dry mix for you so you can hear our before and after. I've got that pretty much loaded up over here. I'll just mute the vocal buses and that kind of thing and turn off everything else so you can hear just the dry track. So as you can hear, it lacks that expensiveness, but it does have the meat and potatoes ready for us to kind of cook. Uh, you know what I mean? So if we turn that off and then turn back on our normal chain, let's listen to that. It just perfectly matches up so there you go man that's pretty cool we'll just kind of get rid of those again so i don't accidentally unmute them but yeah the first thing we start off with is obviously our auto true now because i'm rapping in my own kind of style just more so focusing on the mix style you're gonna tweak the auto tune towards your taste but to really fit in i'm not going too crazy on the auto tune if i did go too crazy on the auto tune and i wasn't singing like t-pain it would be a bit um kind of foreign to the track wouldn't sound that good so that's why i'm using a retune speed of eight i'm using my signature style or the young thug signature style i guess which is minus 12 retune speed and then ignore the natural vibrato or targeting ignores vibrato and it just does something cool to your vocals obviously you have to monitor into the autotune meaning i actually when i'm singing i've got this autotune loaded up i've got the whole vocal or pretty much some of the vocal chain loaded up and that's the way i'm, I'm wrapping into it right generally i'll have the autotune on and then i'll have the ssl channel on which we'll talk about but just now those are the two channels which i've always got on while recording and that kind of gives me a nice idea of if the vocals are going to work in the track so there you go um you know since i am using a uri and a 4 this is what i'm using right now on this voiceover as well as when i am rapping into the track i love to record with this so i have found for you a plugin which i actually purchased a while ago uh, which is the vcl4 which as you can see perfectly kind of replicates uh, my plugin it, it sounds similar but nothing will really sound like the hardware so i would recommend uh, you guys and girls to maybe purchase yourself a secondhand compressor or just use anything um, within the door that is going to get you closest to that sound so generally you can use a fully compressor you can use whatever but i want something to do a bit of initial compression so that i can already have the vocals tamed uh, post recording as you can see there's nothing really that is kind of out of the ordinary in this track i mean i think the loudest thing would be this right so I got a new yeah like it it doesn't really you know pop out of the track and that's the cool thing about a compressor it allows you to get loud get dynamic without actually uh, affecting the overall performance and it's also really nice to hear in your headphones so that's a little tip that you can work towards uh, if you don't own a compressor then you can just obviously enable this you could enable i'll leave a few options especially in the free vst version you will find one and it will give you the same sound so there you go cool so after that man so we are doing something pretty interesting with this template right here and i'll kind of guide you through it um i'm going out of outputs 11 and 12 which goes actually into outboard gear which i'll talk about now but what we also do is i run it through this antelope gear so if you own an audio interface like uad or antelope you actually get onboard effects so as you can see as i said we're running out of um 11 and 12 right which goes out of my line outputs 
you don't really need to focus on this too much just know that it is going into outboard gear and then it runs into all of these and i just use these for flavor really i will uh, create something like this in the freebst version so you can get a similar sound but really the only thing i do that affects the sound would be the uh, kind of um, pull tech style mid-range equalizer which does a 5k boost that's the most important thing i also dip 700 a little bit and then i did a 200 hertz boost to actually just lift the the kind of uh, warmth of the vocal up and that's pretty cool i also did quite a sizable amount of compression with this stay 11 compressor which is a style level compressor by uh, i think retro do a, a a reissue of it but you know if i play the track you can see what's going on i know you were free to and really that just does a little bit of extra sauce to the vocal and everything else is not compressing there this is bugged out but it, it does something cool um but yeah that's pretty much all i do and then i run into a i'll just kind of show you on the video right here i run into an ssl fusion so let me press play again and from the H3000, I insert it, right, so via that insert button right there, boom, uh, into the H3000. And then I actually do my little mix trick where I like to use a bit of flanger on the vocal. And that actually does something to the, the kind of width of the track. So that's pretty much what I do. Pretty easy to emulate within the box. All you really need is a... Um, saturation plug it right there so soul fusion would do a bit of saturation and then the a2000 would do a bit of flange i just wanted to give you something cool for this uh vocal effect but yeah that's pretty much what we do on the main vocal chain once we come out of the outboard gear back in to fl studio we hit this vocal bus right here and then we enter one and two so as i, I showed you earlier um inputs one and two or preamps one and two which is these xlr cables back into the door and then the vocals pop back up here and then i do a bit of volume adjustment you know depending on how loud i want to hit the vocal chain um that we have the digital vocal chain and after that what i'll do is i'll do a bit of ssl eq this is generally what i'm i'm actually recording with because this is a zero latency plugin and it's really cool and it just sounds great and what i'm doing with this eq is pretty much it's pretty much the same as the eq i'm always using so you know for those who are around on the channel pretty much the same but what i'm doing is a bit of filtering so i'm actually getting rid of everything below 135 i found that to be a nice kind of chris brown pop rmb frequency to get rid of and i just have this enabled and it's just kind of doing a bit of a tape roll off at 22,000 hertz and then what i do is i run it into the compression nice bit of ssl compression at two to one it's just going to help lift the volume of the vocal up so pretty cool you can kind of move that uh, knob to towards what you like as you can see if i enable it if i pull the threshold down it squashes the vocal a lot more so i'll let you listen to that and it kind of does something interesting it kind of sounds like a distressor in a sense it's kind of got this nice dbx compression vibe going on it's really cool just adds a bit of pressure on the vocal that's the best way i can describe it after that the most important part of this vocal effect would be the ssl style eq now there is a free ssl eq called the ssq by analog obsession you can go check that out just google that and um yeah we'll start from top to bottom what i do is a high shelf boost so basically a high shelf boost is like this except we start at about 7k and i do about 2.4 dbs uh, of a lift so that's pretty cool and then that just kind of gives the vocal some air but the really cool part about this eq right here is that we can actually enable this g series times three knob which actually allows us to boost 21,000 hertz and that just gives us a really cool sound so that's what we're doing and then right after that i actually do another uh, 100 hertz boost which just kind of gives us this interesting curve and it just really helps lift the vocal up kind of creates presence within the mix but yeah if i disable this ssl eq you can hear how much unsculpted or how unsculpted the, the vocal becomes pretty much best way i can describe it but let's take a listen so as you can hear ssl is very much important towards this mix so that's pretty cool after that man as you know i like to do a little bit of technical eq and really all i'm doing is working with all of the mid frequencies all of the lower mids all the way up to the higher mids just to really help get the vocals sound the same as the chris brown and young doug vocals and you know it's just a whole bunch of boosts and cuts really you know you can obviously um adjust these frequencies to your own sound but yeah that's pretty much what we do 
after that i do again a bit of pull tech i just love these pull tech eqs and since we don't have an analog one we might have to use a few to really get that sound but all i'm doing again is um 4, dip and then i'm doing a 5k boost again right just to really help emphasize that frequency uh these are really nice the mid band is really nice at kind of poking frequencies out that's kind of how we get that definite vocal sound and then i'm just using the uh eqp 1a which is more just an all-rounder and i'm doing the pull tech trick which is to boost and cut at the same time we're doing that on 100 hertz and then i'm doing just a 20,000 hertz kind of dip just to give a bit of a tape sound to the vocal and that's pretty much it after that man this is a pretty cool plugin which i haven't used much in my life but now i'm pretty much using it a bit more and that is the waves c4 and pretty much what that does is it just does a nice hefty amount of compression to the vocal as you can see we haven't done much compression other than on the analog compressor on the ssl and then we can just uh, kind of tone and sculpt our vocal with this so let's just check what's going on that just really helps us kind of blend the vocal in so pretty much what's going on is i've got this low band right here which is just making sure that any excessive bass is kind of tamed okay and then um the mid band is just making sure that those frequencies don't pop out in the mix and then this is most important what's going on is these two bands right here are the uh, high high treble and then the highest treble bands and really they're just taming the track to make sure that that uh, kind of treble doesn't go too crazy that's why we're not doing a ds -er. we're pretty much doing the ds -er all in one here so that's pretty much what's going on after that man we have a bit of ssl bus compression now if you are mixing your track to an already mix mastered beat it is sometimes worth actually adding a bus compressor onto your vocals it's just going to help kind of uh tone things back so if we see how much compression is happening <laughs> and that just helps the vocal kind of blend back in the mix we don't want the vocals to pop out too much we just want it to be kind of nice uh, if you always feel that your vocals are either too much on top of the beat you can try use a bus compressor as well as a multi-band just to make sure that all the frequencies are kind of kind of worked in so yeah man after that i wanted to get the vocal as aggressive sounding because obviously this track has been limited you can kind of see what the peaks look like the track looks pretty much limited and um i wanted to make the vocals sound the same as that so how we're going to do that well i'm actually going to kind of limit the vocal into a limiter right so obviously set the ceiling low i, I can, I can kind of just show you what's going on here let's take a look doesn't really do much but it basically just prohibits the vocal from ever getting too loud so what you could do is if you wanted a more kind of upfront vocal sound you could just drive the input game so let's see what happens here i know you were freak loop babe she let it throw it back on me i think she hates it she's making girls run the world so amazing said she from belgium but she looking asian put one in love drop top no beam but obviously as you can see the vocal becomes excessive but you get the idea right is so we can use that to kind of spark like the vocal uh using compression so yeah man that's pretty much what we do on the beat side of things man we've actually got something pretty interesting going on um so the beat does the same thing with the outboard gear except it doesn't go through any antelope effects as you can see i bypassed them but what i do is i pretty much send the beat out and then i parallel send it as well to an spl vitalizer so what happens is the beat comes back in normal right so that's the beat that comes back in but it also comes back into an SS, uh, an SPL Vitalizer. And this is this device right here, as you can see right there. And I've got this cool thing on here called the sub bass knob, and it's just insane. So what I'll do is I'll actually solo out what we get from the return of this SPL so you can hear what happens and how we actually blend that into the track. So let's just uh, mute everything else right now real quick. So that's the beat with um obviously coming back in and then with the parallel processing but if we were to solo the parallel processing you can take a listen to what happens so this is analog parallel so listen to that
so pretty cool right it's pretty much just a base boost we've also used an ssl to just get rid of everything else in the mid range we don't want any of that we only want the base to shine through as you can see i'm not doing any base boosting so the only base coming through is from this spl vitalizer and it's pretty cool the sub base basically lifts the low end and we can actually use this spl as a kind of extra octave of the base to really fill up the track i just feel that um digital 808s just don't have that extra low end so using an analog processor like this to gain that extra low end is absolutely amazing so i'll just let you hear the beat without the spl and then we'll bring it in and you can hear cool but it doesn't have that extra low end so if you have a sub you can definitely hear the difference So that's really cool that's something i've been doing with my mixing and mastering lately and just like the low end is just way more filled up it's absolutely amazing so yeah man that's pretty much it to be doing in this vocal effect i'll leave everything else for you to see if you decide to cop this template definitely smash like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff check the links in the description for this flp as well as links to my vocal recording course vocal mixing course as well as vocal enhancer i'll check out the next video feel free to ask questions below and i'll answer them if i can peace out